we're going to talk a little bit about what is a fraction. And then when we understand what a fraction is, we can talk about reducing fractions and then doing operations with fractions, like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So the first thing is that a fraction um, represents either part of a whole or part of a group. And we're going to talk about that both in terms of items you might have heard of um, and also in terms of pictures. So to begin with, we're going to talk about the fraction 3 fourths. Here it is, 3 fourths. And you may or may not know that a fraction bar means divide. 3 fraction 4 means 3 divided by 4 or 3 out of 4. You can read it either way. Um, also, when people see this, they usually say 3 fourths. So those are all different ways to say the same thing. Um, if you want to turn them into decimals or percents, and we'll get more into that, um, this decimal, 3 divided by 4 on a calculator, is 0 0.75. You could also write that as 75%. It's all the same value, and that's the key idea of a fraction. Um, if you want to work with a fraction 3 fourths, you could write it in different ways. Like you could write it as 6 eighths or 9 twelfths or on and on and on. Let me show you where I got those numbers and then we'll look at pictures of them. Um, if I take 3 over 4 and I multiply top and bottom by 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. That's where this comes from, the 6 and the 8. Or if I go back to 3 fourths and multiply top and bottom by 3, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12. That's where this comes from, 9 twelfths. Those are called equivalent fractions, and we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, again, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same number to get from one form of 3 fourths to other, fourths, other forms of 3 fourths. Um, that's how we create what are called equivalent fractions, and that's also how we reduce fractions. If I started with the number 6 eighths, I might notice that there's a greatest common factor that goes into both of those. 2 multiplies into 6, and 2 also multiplies into 8. So I could divide top and bottom both by 2, and that would get me back to 3 fourths. Same thing with 9 twelfths. The greatest common factor is 3. 3 goes into top, 3 goes into bottom. If I divide top and bottom by 3, again, I'll get back to 3 fourths. It's just the same number written in different ways. So that's the key. Um, let's talk a little bit about what a picture of this might look like. I've drawn on the board those three different fractions we talked about, 3 fourths, 6 eighths, and 9 twelfths. For 3 fourths, what I did is I tried to draw four equal sized pieces, and then I shaded three of them, one, two, three. And you can hopefully see it's the same as 6 eighths. This is supposed to be the same size rectangle, pretty darn close. But now this rectangle is split up into eight pieces, and I shaded six of them. And you can see this pink shaded area is the same as the black shaded area. And same with this third rectangle over here, the blue one. I broke this one into 12 equal size pieces and shaded nine of them. So all three of these pictures have the same shaded area. The, the colored in black part is the same as the colored in pink, same as the colored in blue, to show that those fractions, again, are the same value, just written in different forms. Let's talk a little bit more about what that fraction 3 fourths could mean, because it's not just part of a shaded picture. Um, a fraction can be part of a whole, like 3 fourths of an apple, or a fraction could represent part of a group, like 3 out of 4 apples. So um, I tried to draw an apple with a slice cut out of it, it didn't go terribly well, but you know what that looks like. If you take 3 fourths of an apple, um, that's part of a whole. 3 fourths represents part of that whole. Or I could also imagine 4 apples and then pick 3 of them. That's another way to do 3 out of 4. So this fraction, this fractional relationship, 3 out of 4, um, represents either part of a single item or it could also represent part of a group. So we're going to continue to practice all of the different operations of fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, as well as solving equations. And one of the things that I think is most important is what we talked about here, which is writing different forms of the same number.